Today, we are going to take a look at our new producer's orchestra line. For those who are unaware, all of the sounds in Arcade are organized into lines, which are collections that fit a common theme or musical purpose. This is our largest release to date with a ton of samplers with playable loops and chromatic instruments. Let's take a tour. We can start with the samplers. From one kit to the next, the material here is highly diverse, designed to be suitable for everything from movie scores to indie rock to hip hop. If we play through the first kit, you can hear that all of these loops are atmospheric meditative string swells. If we move on to another kit and play through it a bit, you can hear that this is obviously a totally different vibe or mood, if you will. It's brass instead of strings, and it's a series of hits and stabs. All right, so let's move on to one of my favorites to check out the macros and modifiers. The macros are pretty simple with a focus on function rather than flash. Checking them out left to right, we first have delay. Then a reverb. Then some type of tone control. In this case, it's a low pass filter. Then a wild card. The wild card could be anything from a phaser like we have here to distortion to some kind of pulse. On the modifier front, for the most part, they are repeaters or stutter effects, if you will. They go from slower to faster as you go left to right. Additionally, there are a few resequencers that allow you to change the order of the loop's progressions along with their rhythms. As with everything in Arcade, if you don't like the order or the rhythm, you can change both of these things pretty easily. Okay, next we're going to check out the chromatic instruments. This is the bulk of the new library. The instrumentation on this side is similar to that of the samplers, i.e. you've got strings, brass, woodwinds, mallet percussion, and so on. You've also got large ensemble, small ensemble, and solo instruments. This should be a solid foundation for all your orchestral writing needs. Let's crack into the first instrument here. We've got this nice string sustain. Off the bat, it's worth noting that these instruments are highly velocity sensitive. So beyond volume change, if I go ahead and play a chord softly, that's going to have a very different timbre compared to a harder hit. This type of thing is super noticeable with brass as well. Moving back to another sustain kit and onto macros, let's take a listen to distance. Going under the hood a bit, what's happening is that the original woodwind sources here were captured with both close and far mics, so there's no real trickery beyond that. Next up is space. This is just reverb. Really the thing of note here is that its functionality is interwoven with the distance macro. So if we look at the guts of the distance macro, we can see that as we bring it in, we also make that reverb longer and darker. On our third fader, we have a swell macro. This macro makes the instrument more pad-like by increasing both the attack and release times.
Now, this macro is going to behave differently depending on what type of instrument we're using. This instrument functions as a sustain, but if we move to another instrument that's more of a stab, we'll see that this macro does almost the opposite thing, i.e. it makes this abrupt sound even tighter, getting rid of the sample's natural reverberation. Looking at our final macro, this is again going to be very different from instrument to instrument. With the one we're currently on, we get additional octaves. Now let's check out another sustain instrument ensemble. Here we will see that we have a dynamics macro. This macro allows us to expressively adjust the loudness of our instrument, which helps give dynamics and realism to sustained sounds. The final little nugget of realism to touch on is round robins. This allows us to trigger a different parallel sample every time we play a note. The idea is that a human would never play the same note identically back to back. This feature is particularly helpful with more stabbing staccato sounds. With that in mind, Here's what it sounds like when we play the same chord eight times in a row with four round robins. Each chord should have sounded a little bit different than the last, although the effect is subtle. Now if we play those same chords but set our round robins to one, i.e. no change, every chord should sound identical. Alright, so that's what I've got for you. Check out Producer's Orchestra inside of Arcade. We put a lot of unique touches into this line, so hopefully you enjoy playing around.